Today's session is about uh, locate uh, searching an executable from the path environment variable. And so how do we, we're going to discuss through and try to figure this out. I'm going to start as usual, create, creating the main function for the program. And also include this stdio library uh, just for testing green hello world let's compile this program and see so it's green hello world now um, the next thing is how to read or how to get the path environment variable. And if you go in the shell and display the path and variable, you're going to see um, we have a list of directories. Uh, let's copy this. We have the list of directories separated by comma, commas. And I'm going to put that in the text file for us to see the structure. So here we have these columns. I want to say columns. And each of these are separated by columns. Now, uh, from the program, we, we're going to start by displaying the, pair, the environment variables first. Then after that, here is the step we're going to follow. The first thing is display the environment variables. Next, uh, get and create a function, a function, um, a, how to get an environment variable. So here we're going to create a function called get env, and we pass in the name of the environment variable, and it will return a pointer to that environment variable. And the next step will be uh, finding a command or uh, searching a, a command from the end from the path and variable so searching a command or searching an executable from the path and variable and once we know uh, the location of um, the executable is we're going to create uh, on this, this step three, we're going to create a function called uh, locate. And this will return the absolute path to the command. So if the command is found, it will return the absolute, uh, the absolute path uh, of the executable, I want to say executable. But if not, it will return a null which means that the executable uh, wasn't found from the path. And step four, we're going to create a simple shell where we, a, a simple shell where we can type in the command and test. So this will be the last step, the fourth. Now let's start by displaying the end variables. So the first thing is we declare an external variable. This external variable is available and will be set when the program starts. It contains, um, it is an array of strings 
and each string represents an environment variable. I'm going to declare a, an i variable. Then we loop over the n variables. So for i, uh, for environment variable, different than null, because this array is a null terminated array. The last element is always a null. And what we do, we print f, we print the n variables. So that will be I plus plus. Let's compile this code and see GCC and main.c. The name of the program will be program. And when you compile it, you see that it's able to display the ends. So here we have the end and each n is a strings and we have the name of the n then an equal sign and on the other side we see the value of the n variable the n variable we're interested in is the path n variable so the path n variable has a list of directory where you can we can look for executables. And these directories are separated by a column. So when you are look, searching for an executable, we have, we look uh, in these directories one by one till we find or not the executable we're looking for. For example, when you type in ls, the ls command in the shell, like that, what will happen is that the shell will be looking for the ls command in the directories from the path and so the absolute path uh, to the ls command would be being ls, then it will execute it, but this will be done in the background. So we're going to do a very similar thing here for our program here. Now let's create a function called get n. There is a, an existing function um, in uh, in this. There is already an, a, a function called get n, but we're going to create a custom get n function. Let's add a file called the main heater file and another file underscore get n. Inside the heater file, we add these macro definitions define main h file. Uh, macro constant and it and the function we creating is the get n function the get n will return the value or the environment variable from the pair uh, from the, the list of n so get n then it will receive here the name of the environment variable The name, uh, the get n, uh, in the get m, the name is not going to change. So we say constant, a char, then name. Now let's define the get n function. We include the main header file. And here we have we're going to add the code for the get and function. Now in the main.c file, uh, this is how we're going to use it. Let's say uh, 
uh, we want to print an environment variable, this is how we call the function, the get end function. For example, if we want to get the path end variable, we type in path. So the get end function will return the value for the path environment variable and then we'll display it with the print of function. Let's go back in the get end function. So as usual, we're going to declare an external variable here for the get end function to access it. What the next step? The next step would be to look through all these environment variables and check if one of these environment variables match, uh, if the name of one of the environment variable match uh, the name in uh, specified in the parameters. The, we have also to understand the structure. These environment the environment variable is an array, so the array has values. So the env, we have the env name, then an equal sign, then we have the value. And after that, we have another env name, for example, env2, let's say name1, name2. And we have another value, value two. Um, it is an array. And so we have to look inside this array. And at the end of this array, there is a null. So we're going to take this name and compare it to each of these elements in to each of these n uh, names in the array. So the first thing we have to do is to start looping through the environment. I'm going to uh, declare a variable called size t. Uh, si a size t type variable, the i. And we say, wow. Uh, uh, environment I since it is a null terminated array we have to say different than null uh, yes we have also to include some lib some libraries the std dev library so we can use the null uh, macro constant. Okay, so we have we're looping through the environment variable, and for each n, we're going to compare the key, uh, the names to the name we receive it, uh, as a parameter. So, what will happen? We take, uh, now we, I'm going to declare another variable called uh, n, n var, this is a null. So we have the n var equal to n var i, then we start comparing. The n var is a string a string that has this kind of structure, the key, and then the value. So what we do, we start comparing this name with this. If it match, we return. If it doesn't match, uh, that means uh, we have to continue search for the next n variable. So here we're going to do a comparison. 
I'm going to create another variable called uh, k. And let's say a, 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 a k and g. Or let's say k, k, yes. So k is equal to zero. We're going to start comparing. So wow uh, and var k is equal to the name k. So the same values, uh, they have the same uh, characters in the same indexes. And what else? The end for k is not null, meaning different than the null character. And also name k different than the null character. So we're comparing them uh, and making sure that k and name or different than the null character. So we're comparing them character by character. We say k plus plus. Now the next step is how to know that we uh, if we got a good match so if there is a match between the end var and the name that has been passed, at the end of this loop, name k should be equal to the null because when you compare, let's say we have something like, I'm going to take this for us to see what is happening here. Let's say n var is equal to something like that. Uh, kf, let's say like that. And, and name also is equal to, let's say, kf. So this loop will compare character by character, this, 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 and that. So if it, for the name, if we are at the end, it's going to hit on the null character, like that. And also we have to check if uh, the path is diff the, the key for the end variable, the name of the end variable is different than, than the equal sign. So I'm going to add this condition here. And different than the equal sign. And now I think that the condition is complete, but let's short, shorten this a bit, we can delete those equal different than null character because um, it, this statement is equivalent to what we deleted now. Okay, now if the name k is equal to the null character, that means we found a match, then this also means we can return this end var. Else, if this is not the case, we continue searching for the next end variable, i plus plus. Then at the end of this loop, we return a null because if we can, we're not able to find an m from inside this loop, that means at the end there is no environment variable there uh, that match the name passed as parameter to the function. So let me delete this command so the code gets short a bit. And 
And the next thing we're going to test if this function works. So we have the get and and let's compile it gcc main.c the output file name will be called program and yes it's saying implicit declaration of get and that means we did not include it the main header file we're going to include it let's compile again yes we have another problem constant uh, passing makes water from integer without a cast expected constant char but argument in oh yes this is not a string so we have to add double quotes great let's compile the program again and here we have a problem uh, we have to compile all the code the c files including the get end file so start c then the output file name will be program so now let's run and here it is so the get end returned the path and the printer function displayed the end and if we have to pass in something else, I'm going to create a variable called and var and call the get and function. So if the and var is different than null, we print the and var. else we say else printf and var not found so this is a simple exercise i'm going to format it let's type in something like x y z x y z there is no n called xyz so when you compile the code you see that var not found so the get end function is performing well now we know how to get the end variable the next thing is how to look for and executable from the path and variable so for that we're going to create a function called locate locate.c and the prototype for this function will be a shard start type then it will locate uh, the file file name so if the file or the executable exists or I'm going to just say name so the name can be the file or the executable uh, whatever but it's going to search for the name of an executable from the path and variable. And inside this locate function, we add and we include the main header file. So in the main function, what we're going to do is is that we say printf and we display the location for example of the ls function so when you type in ls it will return the path to the absolute path to the ls executable file so it will look in each of the directories in the path variable that return the path 
so the printer function will display it. Now let's go back in the locate function. The first thing the locate function has to do is to get the path and variable. So let's declare a variable called path. Path. And the path will be called, uh, we're going to call the get end on uh, and assign the value to path. So there is something I want to add because in the locate function, we're going to uh, kind of modify uh, certain things, but let's, uh, let's continue, but later I'm going to explain. So here we have the path and variable. As we said, the structure of the path and will be like that. We have path, then equal, then we have a uh, path to Q1, then a colon, then path to G2, then a colon, then path to G3. So this is how the path and is structured. Now the work will be to get these one by one. Then after that, check if the, the file exists in those directories. So the first thing I'm going to declare would be dear path. So this will be called dear path. This will be the name, the path to the directory. And I'm going to declare another variable called file path. This will be what we're going to return. Let's include a std def data file so we can use the macro constant null. There is a function called str talk. I'm going to include this other function. Why do we need the str talk? The str talk will tokenize the string. So when you call it, it will, uh, with a delimiter, it will return a pointer to a token. For example, I'm going to say str talk. Then we pass in the path. And after that, with the delimiter, we say equal. This is for the initialization because we don't need uh, this part. So the str took will look for the equal uh, string inside this path and if it found the equal sign it will replace it by a null character then return a pointer to the first token so the pointer to uh, here. And the next call, when we call the str talk again, but this time in null because uh, inside the str talk there is a variable, a static variable that holds the current state where the str talk, uh, for example, is located, uh, where the cursor is on the string. So the next thing we want to do is to return a token, but for the delimiter column. So the SDR took what it will do, it will look for the column and replace this with a null character and return a pointer to uh, the start of the token. So this will be the, the, the directory path. I'm going to 
say dear Bev. Now while we have a directory path, we create the file path. So let's say we are going to uh, check if uh, we're going to, let's say, join the paths. The separator will be uh, the slash. This function doesn't exist yet, but we're going to create it. We're going to join the path. So we have the dear path and the file name. And after that, what's going to happen, we have to check if the file at file path exists. So if file exists, we pass in the file path. If it exists, that means we have to return file path. Uh, for now, we don't have these functions, but and since we're writing the code, we just know we must just know that these functions uh, might be useful. Sometimes you can write the, your solutions without knowing what are the other functions and how to implement them, but you've got just an idea that you need some kind of functions that do this kind of task. So if we found a path, we return the file, the full path, so we have the absolute path to be executable. Else, what we do, we we look for the next token, str2, we pass in the null, then the separator, this will return the next directory, like that, a pointer to the next uh, token, and this will be our next directory. Then after that, we join the paths to get um, the absolute path, and after we check if the file exists in that directory. If it does exist, we return a null. Uh, we return the file path. We are at the limit of the 40 minutes, so we're going to restore the session and come back.